beginning signs, any anxiety, any depression, and just the road to madness. So oh, you've done something wrong, or someone is chasing you, someone is chasing you down, your village people did not leave you, they are looking after you, they are looking for you. You've done something to them, your ancestors did something to them, so they're coming for you. That's how Africans view mental health. Like, thousand miles per hour i think especially when you're young like they tell you you know this is time of your life you have to go for it if you don't do it now what are you doing with yourself like everyone is just like go 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 i don't believe that god is a god of passivity like god is a god that doesn't know um how to help his people god knows you more than you know yourself and he knows what you need and the first thing that you need is him <laughs> and I'm sure I have a lot of videos for you to check out if you have not already. If you're a returning subscriber, if you're a returning viewer, you're so welcome. But if you're new here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also click the notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. It's free and it's a fun and loving community. Today, I want to say Happy Africa Day, first of all. Africa Day was two days ago and I think it's so amazing that we're celebrating Africa. We're celebrating who we are, we're celebrating our unity and our coming together. I uploaded some really interesting posts on my Instagram. So if you've not seen them, it would be really nice for you to check them out. All about just a little bit of, you know, poetic, <laughs> poetic um, words about um, Africa, our food and who we are using a few interesting ingredients. So check that out if you have not. So I also like to say happy mental health awareness month. Yes, it's a happy thing and it's a joyful thing that we have a month like this. I think it's amazing that we're at a point in our society that we're able to appreciate mental health awareness and we're able to understand that we need to push the awareness, especially in Africa. So this is going to be a video about mental health and about Africa. If you're African, if you're Nigerian, you know that mental health is a taboo in Africa for cultural and religious reasons. If you look at African history, from a historical perspective, we never spoke about mental health issues. It was always a taboo, and if you had any kind of mental health problem, you were kind of cast out of society. No one wanted to talk about it. Everyone, everyone wanted to hide it because it was seen as more of a spiritual problem than a mental problem. So I think Africans have this belief that mental illness is a sign of spiritual depravity, spiritual um, problems, spiritual struggle. And if you've not seen my video on the Bible and mental health, I think you should check that out because I'm trying to tackle mental health from a biblical perspective in that video. It should be up here or down below or just search it up, okay? Um, so I'm basically talking about what does the Bible say about mental health because especially in Christian circles, we tend to believe that the Bible is mostly silent about mental health. Mm -hmm. And with the rise of suicides, especially amongst people in Christian communities amongst pastors we need to talk about it but that's not going to be my topic for today if you want to hear about that go and watch that video today I'm talking about Africa and mental health so in general in Africa mental health is seen as a taboo topic we don't talk about it because it's seen as like there's a deeper problem that's causing a mental health illness that does not just a poor mental capacity or a poor mental that just that's not just you not having been taking care of yourself mentally so it's not seen as like physical illness like oh this can happen because of you know underlying conditions or because of something you've gone through in life it's seen as like oh you've done something wrong or someone is chasing you someone is chasing you down your village people did not leave you they are looking after you they are looking for you you've done something to them your ancestors did something to them so they're coming for you that's how africans view mental health so and the funny thing about it is that the mental health issues among africans has just been rising and rising especially in recent years obviously due to the kind of modern society we live in the rise of um, stressful situations the um, ambition and the quest to perform and overperform so mental health awareness month i feel like this year is super special because we're all in quarantine and although for a lot of us that means that we're able to have less stress and control our um, routines for a lot of people it actually means that we have more stress due to um, even more heated domestic violence due to even more heated abuse that can have such a detrimental effect on their mental health and even for those of us who are staying at home like we thought we were homebodies but like now it's just driving us crazy so what are the five tips that we've been given um, as ways to be kind to our minds in this season the first one is pause 
pause, breathe, reflect. It's so easy to just keep going in life like a thousand miles per hour. I think especially when you're young, like they tell you, you know, this is time of your life. You have to go for it. If you don't do it now, what are you doing with yourself? Like everyone is just like, go, 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 go. And we forget that if we just keep going and we never pause, we're putting such mental stress on ourselves that our bodies cannot cope. And at the end of the day, we are going to have some kind of reaction to that. Now, the second thing is to keep a healthy routine. Do not just have a horrible routine where you're just working, 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 or because you're home, you know. Some people are working almost 24 hours because they do not, they no longer can leave work. They are just at home working all the time. And the problem with that is that you're never going to have your... Um, you're never going to have a healthy routine so you're, you're not going to have you know times where you eat healthy food times where you can go out and exercise because you're stuck at home you can just kind of like absorb this home thing and have just a horrible routine you know you're no longer going on walks you're no longer doing exercise but this is a time actually to be able to control your routine and have the healthiest routine you have ever had the third thing is connect with others this seems like a facade in this time because this is the time when we're all disconnected from the world in a world that seems to be most connected using the internet, yet we're all living fake lives on the internet, which means that we are even more disconnected than if we were just at home, if that makes any sense to you. Connect with people you're living with. If you're not living in a very positive environment, you have to find people online who are like-minded, who are positive, who are going to speak life into you and connect with them. This is the time where you can actually control yourself because nobody's forcing you to talk to anyone that you don't want to talk to God, except that you can. But apart from that, no one is forcing you to talk to anyone you don't want to talk to. You're actually able to control the positivity that comes into you. And another thing I'll say is that when you're connecting with people, don't be myopic and don't be stupid. If I can say that, don't connect with people who you think are going to make you more popular or more significant. Connect with people who you know are good for you. Control your Instagram feed, control your Twitter, control your Snapchat, control your TikTok. What are you consuming? Control who you allow into your life and into your space. It is super, super important. The next one, number four, I think, is be kind to yourself and to others. I think I saw like a lot of kindness videos going around last week, which was Mental Health Awareness Week. And it's so important to be kind to yourself, number one. One thing, one amazing thing that you can do to be kind to yourself is positive confessions, make excuses for yourself, make sure you plan rest and activities that you enjoy into your day, and also be kind to others. Extend the same love and kindness you want to see in yourself, you want to see others give, show to you, to other people around you. And the amazing thing about kindness is that it's better to share kindness. Like, it's kind of the same thing as it's better to give than to receive. When you share kindness, the joy that you feel is even greater than when someone extends kindness to you, extends kindness to you because it's something that when you release it, it makes you even freer than when you give it. So make sure that you're kind to yourself and to others around you. This is time to love on people and not to make them feel worse about themselves. And last of all, reach out for help if you need it. Yes, we're all trying to be kind to others and yes, we're all trying to you know support each other. But if you know that you need help, reach out. Don't think you can handle it by yourself, especially in this time when you're all like stuck at home. Don't keep quiet about things you're going through. If you're facing serious struggles, the worst thing you can do is to shut up about it. Obviously, be wise about who you tell, but make sure you tell someone who can help you. There's lots of anonymous counselors you can reach if you don't even trust anyone in your, net in your network. And most of all, you can talk to God. And He will direct you on where you can get help. I don't believe that God is a God of passivity. That God is a God that doesn't know um, how to help his people. God knows you more than you know yourself and he knows what you need. And the first thing that you need is him. And then he will connect you to human beings who can help you grow in him and love him. And also help you heal from whatever trauma or problems that you have. Last of all, just to talk about mental health in Africa. I just want to talk about what actually are the types of mental health illness. Because I think in our heads, I don't know what we classify mental health as Africa in this continent, so far I would say country, as you will say that we are a country, we are a continent of diverse people that are still unified by the way. So um the types of mental health in uh, mental health illness because illness because preconceived notions about Africa is that mental health problem means madness. Any beginning signs, any anxiety, any depression, it just the road to madness. So wherever you are <laughs> Wherever you are on that spectrum or that road, the end level is like complete loss of senses, loss of mental capacity, which is so untrue. So some of the main groups of mental disorders disorders are mood disorders, such as 
depression and bipolar disorder. This actually reminds me of, I was watching Jennifer the other day, and if you guys remember Dio, who was bipolar, the way that his mother treated him and just wanted him to marry, no one really wanted him to be mentally well. They all just wanted him to live a normal life. And he had a mental health issue, which if everyone was accepting and loving and actually willing to help him and be honest to the people who he was going to share life with, his life would have been completely different. But his mom, and you can understand why, was trying, she was trying to love him, but she didn't know how to love him well. If you want to love someone who has a mental health problem, if you want to love yourself and ensure that you have good mental health or ensure that you work through your mental health issues, the first thing you need to do is accept and understand what is wrong. And then know that it might not be a normal process, it might not be what the world considers as normal to you getting to live a happy life. No, there will be changes you have to make. So more disorders such as depression and bipolar. Number two, anxiety disorders. Um, and anxiety is something I think is, is very, very common. And there's different levels of anxiety. Um, psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia. There are personality disorders. For eating disorders, I think this is so important. We don't talk about eating disorders in this country. We don't talk about anorexia. We don't talk about bulimia. We don't talk about binge eating. So many of us are binge eating. And I, I don't mean like on a whim. I mean like so many of us binge eat to, to cope with emotional stress, to cope with mental stress. And it is horrible. But we, you know, we consider this like, oh, why are you this weight? Or why are you this skinny? Or why are you blah, blah, blah? Lots of people are struggling with the relationship with food, eating disorders. Um, trauma related disorders such as post traumatic stress disorder. Another thing we don't talk about in this country. Another thing where it's like, oh, are you afraid after having an accident? Oh, why are you so weak? But it's a real thing. Also, um, postpartum um, stress is also a big thing as well that we don't talk about. And if mothers don't get the care and the attention and the help that they need, it can be very, very detrimental at the end of the day. I remember remembering the story of this um, lady that was. Um, the story of this lady that killed her child because she didn't know what else to do. And then we also have substance abuse disorders which are super super prevalent in our time as well. Anyways guys, this is just like my little encouragement about mental health um, and just a reminder about things that we need to do to help protect our mental health. They are pause, keep, connect, be kind and reach out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!